Check your data processing with these steps. You can fast forward if you need to. In this investigation, some of the basics have been done for you, but the rest you need to make sure you formatted correctly using the rubric in the checklist. For example, making sure the titles are correct in your graphs, checking your axes in your graphs, making sure the decimal places are consistent, filling in the associated qualitative data, the observations. And in your lab report, you also need to give examples of the calculations that are carried out along the way. So let's plot the mean. This one's easy. Put in this box equals average. Select across this row just of the trials. Close it. Enter. Then take the bottom corner and drag it down. And it will copy the formula downwards and the way the graph is set up today will plot these points for you. The plotted points are the mean extension of the spring and the x-axis represents the weight in newtons that's been added to the spring. We also need to add some error bars to our points and for this we're going to use plus or minus half the range so it will plot half the range above and half the range below each of the points and that's simple for the range take the maximum value minus the minimum value so it's zero for this one and three for this one and half the range is simply the range divided by 2. So it equals this cell divided by 2. Enter. And again, pick the corner, drag it down. Now you'll notice when you look at the graph that these points are not the default. Now if we look at the points, we can see these aren't the ugly default XL points. What we have here is the marker style is a simple X, which is size 9. The marker line is simply black and a thin weight and the shadows, which are really confusing, have been removed. Also different to the default is the titles, the title of the graph and on the axes the font size has been reduced down to 12. The ugly default will make big titles which take up far too much space on your page. Now let's add the error bars which have been custom calculated for each one of these points. Go to chart layout, error bars, skip all of these, go to error bars options, we want both, we want custom, we want to specify value, and we want to tell the graph to put the positive error bar as half the range and the negative error bar is half the range. So that's telling it to do half up and half down, which gives us the full range on the error bars. Hit OK, and OK. And now this is pretty ugly. That's no use, get rid of that. And away we go. You can see from these error bars that they've been calculated for individual points. And in some cases, the error bars might be too small to see on your graph. If that's true, write that in the title. The error bars represent plus or minus half the range, but some may be too small to see. Next, let's add a trend line. So go to chart layout, trend line, linear trend line, boom, there you go. And what we can also do is try to find the equation of the line. So let's click on here, right click, format trend line options and display the equation on the chart okay and this is the equation of our line y represents the extension of the spring and x represents the weight that's been added to the spring using this formula you'll be able to calculate the weight of the mystery objects based on their extension so you need to rearrange the equation to put x on the left hand side and then when you hang the mystery weights the extension of those weights will give you the weight and you can put those values here in the measured value. In your work you need to give an example of the calculation and how you've rearranged it for those three mystery weights. For this example I've put in some measured weights here. 
The final thing to do is to compare them to the true weight of those mystery objects. And the true weight can be found by placing them on the digital balance and then multiplying that, multiplying that mass in grams by a constant which represents or will convert it into newtons. Now you need to find out that and cite the source in your lab report. Our final calculation is to calculate the percentage error of our created spring weight measuring tool. And that's simply the difference between the true value and the measured value, which is calculated by having the measured value minus the true value, and that difference divided by the true value to give a proportion of the error related to the true value, and multiplied by 100 which would give us a percentage error. Now you can see that this number here is inappropriate, it's got far too many decimal places. So we can highlight this column, highlight this column, Morning. select format cells, and go to number, number, decimal places one, okay. Finally, fill the formula down, and you can use this data in your lab report. What does a positive percentage error tell you, and what does a negative percentage error tell you? The last thing to do is to check all of your titles, all of your axes, make sure it's all fully complete, and self-assessed against the rubric. Then you can submit.